According to experts, Homo neanderthalensis, also known as Homo sapiens neanderthalensis, was a late archaic form of human that diverged from modern human lineages no earlier than 500,000 years ago and largely disappeared from Europe and Asia by 40,000 years ago. Due to their morphological differences, many now recognize them as subspecies. A 100,000-year-old Neanderthal woman from Siberia's Denisova cave had type A blood, as did another from nearby Chagirskaya cave, and a 64,000-year-old woman from Croatia's Vindija cave had type B blood. The most likely explanation is that the ancestors of Neanderthals and modern humans already had the full range of the system until recently. Since all chimps are type A and all gorillas are type B, it was assumed that all Neanderthals were type O. However, all three Neanderthals carried the now rare rhesus blood type known as rhesus plus incomplete, which had only been discovered in the DNA of one member of Australia's population. Interbreeding with Homo sapiens has a 1 in 5 chance of producing a baby with hemophilic disease, which may explain why Neanderthal sapiens inbreeding was limited. Researchers have hypothesized that Neanderthal babies grew faster in their early years than Homo sapiens, which could strain their mother's health. Neanderthals had a massive brain and must have had a high-protein diet. To generate enough milk, Neanderthal mothers undoubtedly ate a lot of meat. Even if you don't care about Neanderthals, these unions may have caused longer interbirth intervals and lower birth rates. They may have also contributed to modern human skin tone and hair color. This hypothetical story emphasizes the mutual curiosity and cultural differences between two different human species. It's a moment of connection between individuals from distinct worlds portrayed with care and respect. She was a young Neanderthal and gambled about the countryside as naked as a monkey. Her body adapted to the cold climate. She was short, around 5 feet tall, but had good posture and pale skin, light brown hair and a good tan. Around her neck, she wore a bracelet of eagle talons. He was a tall, Cro-Magnon man, around 6 feet, a hunter clad in an animal skin coat with a wolf fur trim. He had olive skin, long legs, and long dark brown hair. His facial features were softer and more graceful than Neanderthal man. She was a daughter of the ancient forest, her senses sharp like the animals she hunted. Her people, the Neanderthals, had long roamed these lands, and the dense woods held no secrets from her. She was strong, her muscles honed by years of survival, with a sturdy frame that spoke of resilience. Her large eyes were intelligent and observant, ever watchful of her surroundings. As the sun dipped lower in the sky, the two found themselves drawn together by a shared warmth, both literal and metaphorical. The Neanderthal woman, with her strength, and the Homo sapiens man, with his quick mind, communicated through actions rather than words. They shared a fire, testing the boundaries of their mutual curiosity. As the night deepened, he appreciated her raw power, her presence and embodiment of the ancient world, and she was attracted by his delicate grace and the newness he brought in the firelight. Their differences faded, primal, a timeless link. There is no proof that female Neanderthals preferred early modern human men, but there are some signs. Homo sapiens females appeared to prefer mating with Denisovan males, at least in Papua New Guinea, implying the potential nature of those relationships. However, there is some evidence that Neanderthal males with high testosterone were more adventurous than modern humans. As a result, it stands to reason that Neanderthal male Y chromosomes would resemble Denisovan male Y chromosomes. However, when scientists sequenced the DNA from three Neanderthals who lived 38,000 to 53,000 years ago, they were surprised to find that their Y chromosomes were more similar to those of modern humans. The researchers claim this is evidence of strong gene flow between Neanderthals and early modern humans, implying that they interbred extensively. So frequently, in fact, that as Neanderthal populations dwindled near the end of their time on Earth, their Y chromosomes may have become extinct and been replaced entirely by our own. This suggests that a large number of modern human men had genetic exchanges with female Neanderthals, but the story does not stop there. Other studies have found that Neanderthal mitochondrial DNA, the cellular machinery that aids in the conversion of sugars into usable energy, suffered nearly identical fates. These are exclusively passed down from mothers to their children, so the discovery of early modern human mitochondria in Neanderthal remains suggests that our ancestors had genetic exchanges with male Neanderthals this time. Interbreeding is expected to have occurred between 270,000 and 100,000 years ago, most likely during warmer periods. An interview with French archaeologist Ludac Slimak revealed 
that scientists know little about the period when our species evolved. When two populations are close but very different because they speak different languages, have different traditions or live in neighboring territories, they will exchange women. This is important in cultural anthropology because gene exchange is not always a romantic affair. Every traditional society is concerned with the identities that will be formed between two groups, which is called patrilocality. 50,000 years ago, all sapiens had near Neanderthal DNA, but no recent Neanderthal had modern Homo sapiens DNA. This is interesting because late Neols had 10% archaic DNA from earlier encounters. This is a sensitive and important issue in understanding the extinction and precise interaction of the two populations. 40,000 years ago, two groups of humans lived oblivious of one another. The Neanderthals, with their muscular builds and deep-set eyes, ruled the region for generations, living by the seasons and nature, Homo sapiens, taller and more agile, had lately begun their expedition into this rugged land in quest of fresh hunting grounds and territory. One afternoon, a party of men discovered a Neanderthal encampment. Smoke drifted lazily from a central fire and the air smelled of roasted meat and herbs. The Neanderthals had a complex and colorful society inspired by their extended Ice Age survival. Broad-shouldered and wary, the Homo sapiens men approached. Both groups were aware of the other's existence. There had been sightings in the distance, whispered rumors around the fires, but this was the first time they stood face to face. After moments of tense silence, the Neanderthals extended their hands. Laughter and nods of approval spread as they passed around chunks of roasted game and drank from leather skins filled with fermented berries. A sense of mutual respect and understanding grew between them, born out of their shared struggle against the unforgiving land. Then, as night fell and the stars emerged, the Neanderthal leader rose from his seat. He made a series of gestures, inviting over several women from their tribe. The leader spoke in his deep voice, and though the words were foreign to the Homo sapiens men, the intention was clear. As was customary in many ancient cultures, the Neanderthal tribe was offering a way to forge bonds between the two groups. The Homo sapiens men had their own customs and traditions but they understood that this offer was a merging of bloodlines and a sign of goodwill. In the harsh world they inhabited, alliances were vital for survival, and such gestures could strengthen ties that might ensure the survival of both groups. After a moment of quiet contemplation, the Homo sapiens leader stood, meeting the gaze of the Neanderthal chief. He accepted the offer, but with a sense of reverence. This wasn't just an act of survival, it was a connection, a bridge between two worlds. Throughout the night, the two tribes celebrated together in the firelight, their differences faded, and the shared humanness of both Neanderthal and Homo sapiens came to the forefront. They danced, sang, and told stories in their own ways, their voices blending in the night. In the days that followed, Homo sapiens men stayed with the Neanderthal tribe, learning from them, sharing knowledge, and participating in their rhythms of life. While the merging of the two groups did not erase their differences, it laid the groundwork for a deeper connection that would last as long as their survival depended on each other. The children born from these unions carried the strength of both worlds, and their... Little did they know their time was limited. Another recent study found that several volcanoes erupted in quick succession around 40,000 years ago in Italy and the Caucasus Mountains, which span Europe and Asia. After analyzing pollen and ash from the affected area, Researchers concluded that the eruptions likely reduced or wiped out local Neanderthal bands while indirectly affecting distant populations. Russia's Mesomassaya cave sediment layers from 40,000 years ago showed that the layer with the most volcanic ash had the least plant pollen. But, you know, the eruptions 40,000 years ago were unlike anything Neanderthals had ever experienced. All of the volcanoes erupted simultaneously and the Campanian Ignimbrite is thought to be Europe's most powerful in the last 200,000 years. Italy had no tree pollen and very little pollen from other types of plants. It was simply a sterile layer. The extinction of plants would have reduced the number of plant-eating mammals, affecting the Neanderthals who hunted larger mammals for food. New data on the GLA period, which lasted from approximately 65,000 to 25,000 years ago, revealed that it was characterized by rapid, severe, and abrupt changes that had far-reaching environmental consequences. Although Neanderthals were physically adapted to the cold, severe changes in conditions often within individuals' lifetimes left no time for populations to recover.
For much of the last century, Neanderthals were portrayed as gorilla-like, knuckle-dragging brutes, whose extinction some 30,000 years ago was the natural outcome of competing against a more intelligent, creative, and resourceful human species, Homo sapiens. It was once believed that Neanderthals dwelt in a state of astonishing savageness, walked around as naked as a monkey, and uttered sounds more like the cries of wild beasts than human speech. Notwithstanding initial misperceptions, Neanderthals were usually upright. 19th and early 20th century reconstructions of Neanderthals, particularly the extensive reconstruction of the partial skeleton of an elderly male Neanderthal from La Chapelle aux Saint in France, depicted these archaic humans as primitive and semi-erect. Now a 3D virtual reconstruction of the La Chapelle aux Saint Neanderthal has shown that he and other Neanderthals had a fully erect posture. Please subscribe to Extinct Giants, share and watch our other videos. Thank you and take care. Peace.